Leslie Smith, and I believe we have her attorney on the phone with Lucas Middlebrook. Is that right? Yes, I believe it is. Hi, Leslie. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing quite well. And Lucas, you're there uh, via phone, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Leslie, let me go to you first. First of all, how are you doing? Nice to see you. Oh, man, I'm awesome. I had the best Friday ever. It was everything I could have hoped for. All right. Ooh, we got to turn his uh, sound down. There we go. Okay, let me go to you first, Leslie, if I may. So I hear from you. Can we turn him down in the back, please? There we go. Thank you. All right. Let me go to you first. I apologize. I saw that you were j jubilant on Friday. So for folks who don't know the situation, you, of course, were scheduled to fight at UFC Atlantic City. Uh, that all fell through. You were released, and you believe that their behavior there was related to your potential organizing activities around Project Spearhead. You took that complaint, as I understand it, to the NLRB, the National Labor Review Board, and they found what, Leslie? They found that my claims had merit. They that's, that's the only thing that they're doing in this first place is deciding whether or not my claims have merit and they're worth the National Labor Relations Board um, prosecuting, filing charges against the UFC. So... That was the first thing Lucas called me on Friday morning saying that indeed the National Labor, the NLRB had found that my claims had merit, that they think that not only was I retaliated against by the, or that my claim that I was retaliated against by the UFC for organizing is legit, but they also think that we're statutory employees. That's the first federal office to agree so far on this journey. So it's two claims that they essentially weighed in on. One, they weighed in on whether or not, in your judgment, well, their judgment, rather, whether or not you were discriminated against related to these particular issues. And then also, independent of that, they found that you're a statutory employee. Is that it? Indeed. The reason that they found that we're employees is because the National Labor Relations Board is set up to enforce the National Labor Relations Act. And the National Labor Relations Act is to protect employees. And so they couldn't have made a ruling on me being discriminated against unless they decided that I was indeed a statutory employee. And that was the whole point of Project Spearhead in the first place, was to establish whether or not we are actually employees or independent contractors. So in order to answer the claim about me getting retaliated against, they had to deal with the very first issue that we were invested in anyway. Now, Lucas, if I can, I'll go to you. Uh, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. Sorry about the sound issues. They were just blowing my eardrums out here in these uh, headphones of mine. Uh, let me go to you, if I may, on this clarification. When they say they found uh, merit for the claim that Leslie was discriminated against, did they put this in writing? And if so, what did they say? No, it is not in writing. I received a call from Region 4, which is where Leslie's charge is pending. It's located in Philadelphia. It's the region that has jurisdiction over Atlantic City, which is where her fight was. I received a call from Region 4 early Friday saying that they had made a merit determination in Leslie's favor. And as Leslie just explained, the merit determination touched on two points. There was merit that uh, Leslie and other similarly situated fighters were employees under the NLRA and not independent contractors. Therefore, the act has uh, applicability. And the second merit determination was that there was enough evidence presented that uh, that uh, the releasing of Leslie was for retaliatory purposes, which is illegal under the National Labor uh, Relations, Relations Act. And what a, what a merit determination means is that the region, the federal government, has decided that uh, Leslie, in this instance, produced enough evidence uh, to back up her claim, and, and therefore the region, uh, absent settlement, uh, which they said they would give about a month, would be filing a complaint uh, against the UFC based on Leslie's charge. And at that point, the NLRB region actually serves as uh, a prosecutor almost, uh, and they prosecute the complaint against the UFC. So there was nothing in writing, and that's typical uh, you know, when you're first informed that they've made a merit determination. Okay, so let me just get a clarification. When you say that they're going to file a complaint what, what is the nature of that complaint? Is it binding for some kind of law to be changed? Like, ultimately, what is the upshot once the complaint is filed in the real world? Sure. What happens is the NLRB files a complaint almost similar to a complaint that would be filed in a civil action, except it's filed 
uh, under, in front of an administrative law judge. So they file a complaint. It's they being the NLRB. It's served on the UFC. The UFC gets a chance to answer, put forward any affirmative defenses that they believe apply, uh, which one would be independent contractor, because remember, it, the burden is on the employer, employer here, the UFC, to prove that these fighters are independent contractors and not statutory employees. So the burden is actually not on Leslie to prove that it would be on the UFC. Uh, so they would make those affirmative defenses. There would be a small discovery period period where you can request documents from each side, similar to a court proceeding. And then eventually the case would proceed uh, to an administrative law judge, and there would be a hearing held in Philadelphia at the, the Region 4 offices. And then after the hearing, the, the judge would ask for post-hearing uh, written briefs, and then the administrative law judge would rule on the, on the, the questions in front of him or her, which would be, the employee versus independent contractor, and whether or not Leslie was uh, retaliated. And once that judge issues a decision, that is now NLRB case law, and the parties are free to appeal that decision to the full board if, if either party so wishes. What, what, uh, one more question uh, with Lucas, and I'll get back to you, Leslie, in just a minute. But, Lucas, what is the timeline for that? If all that proceeds as you had discussed, what are we looking at in terms of a horizon? It's a more expeditious process than a civil action in either state or federal court. Uh, obviously, it's a you know, it's a little bit of a complicated matter. So I, you know, I would envision if if that proceeded per the timeline that we heard Friday morning, that we could potentially be in a hearing by the end of this year. Oh, okay, Rel relatively quickly. Uh, I'll go back to you here, Leslie, to discuss this. You know, it's interesting when you were a part of the UFC, you made clear Project Spearhead was not against them. It was merely to be at an equitable sort of uh, part of the table with them, right? Let's share the power, and then we'll all work together. But it seems to me, and correct me if I'm misunderstanding it, this new effort is related to merely what happened in Atlantic City, where, whereas Project Spearhead is about sort of the equality for everyone and to work together, you do now have a grievance against them. So it's a bit of a competing or not quite unified interests, right? You know, it's interesting. I can see how it looked like that. But Project Spearhead was actually started to spearhead the process of organizing the fighters. It wasn't meant to be um, adversarial or antagonistic at all. The idea was that we were having a hard time deciding um, or, or setting something up that all the fighters could get behind because there is so much confusion about should we be a union or should we be an organization? Because everyone agrees that yes, we, we do need the fighters to come together so we can have a say in things, other than just um, voicing similar opinions on Twitter. So Project Spearhead, the whole goal of Project Spearhead was to find out if we were employees or independent contractors by collecting authorization cards. And we were going to collect about 200 of those and submit them to the National Labor Relations Board as a showing of interest and then they would decide if we were independent contractors or employees based on our situation. So when the UFC took the um, steps to release me, it actually just sped up the timeline for everything. And we already have a federal office agreeing that we're um, statutory employees, whereas before I would have needed to get all of the cards in the first place just to get a federal office to chime in and give their opinion. I, I see. So even if you had gotten all those authorization cards that you needed, you could have collected them, dropped them off in Philly or wherever, whatever the, one of the offices was, and they could have said, yeah, no, there's nothing here. They could have done that? It was a possibility. It could have happened. They could have said, no, nope, we don't think that you qualify as employees, and you guys just need to do your own thing. All right, so that takes me back to Project Spearhead for just a second, if I may. You guys are out there really promoting this cause. I've had you on my show a number of times. We talked about it at length. I think it's the right thing. Nevertheless, how is the effort going? One wonders, is this new effort with the grievance claim a consequence of some kind of... Are you pursuing that because things with Project Spearhead are not going well, or they're just going along fine, and this is a, a new track to also pursue your, your, your ends? Well, I've actually gotten some fighter support, um, but the cards have, I feel like the reason that we needed to file was because the UFC cutting me the way that they did and how vocal I've been about fighters' rights was that it effectively silenced, um, silenced all the conversation about fighter rights and 
about bringing the fighters together and about unionizing. And it created a climate of fear. People didn't want to talk about it. They didn't want to be promoting it. They were worried that they were going to get cut as well. And so this step with filing with the NLRB, um, one of the options could have been that they could have done injunctive relief where they would have reinstated me in the UFC in the idea that it would prove to the other fighters that they don't have to be scared of getting retaliated against um, if they stand up for fighters trying to organize. So they haven't chosen to do that, but these are all the steps that we needed to do in order to get the fighters back in a place where they understand that they can do this without risking their job. The project spirit is totally confidential. We're still going to need those cards to get signed, and it's completely confidential. Not a single person, except for the ones who have spoken of it on their own, have been outed. Nobody knows who else has signed the cards except for the people who have said, hey, I'm all about Project Spearhead. So that's totally confidential, but it's still an issue that fighters feel confident and secure in supporting it. What, what do you have, what are you now more hopeful about as a successful end for this? That this case will move through Philly and ultimately the various parties will rule in your favor or that the process you had started with Project Spearhead will see itself through? Well, see, that's interesting because there's a couple different ways that this could go. One of them is um, the UFC has the option to offer a settlement within the next month. And that could be interesting to see. Maybe as part of it, they're going to change some of their policies. Maybe they're going to say this is a big threat to our business model and we need to treat them like independent contractors and then the fighters are going to get back all the freedoms that they had as independent contractors before before the supervision of USADA. Um, I mean, I, and I'm not against drug testing. I think it's an important thing. But I also think it's a very important thing that the fighters get a chance to weigh in on it. Same thing with the weight cuts and um, but like the uniforms, there's there's just some different things that make us employees instead of independent contractors. So maybe the UFC is going to want to change those things so they can hold on to their business model the way that it is. Or maybe we're going to go ahead and all these steps are going to go through and the NLRB with this case is going to, it's just going to keep on going and we're going to get affirmed each time with our um, stance and then we're going to get the card signed with Project Spearhead, and then we'll unionize, and then we'll be able to sit down and collectively bargain for everything that the fighters deserve as employees. So it's kind of hard to say right now, and it's actually not even up to me. The whole point of everything is to do what's best for the fighters, and the only way to do what's best for the fighters is to ask them, because they're the ones that know. So these steps are going right now, and then the next time that there's an option to go different directions in this path, then I'm going to reach out to all the fighters and say, what do you guys think? And what do you guys want? Because I'm not doing this for me. I'm not even in the UFC anymore. I'm doing this to advance the position of fighters. Yeah, I, I'll get back to Lucas in one second, because I know there's been an update to this case and I want to get him to weigh in on it. But a lot of folks are saying, okay, we understand why you're involved in this, but you don't even, I mean, you do have skin in the game because you are a fighter and you care, but you're not in the UFC. So for, let, let's just go ahead and answer them whether or not they deserve to be, folks might be saying, well, she's just trying to get back in the UFC. She's trying to find a way to get involved again. Your modus operandi here is what? Why are you still so heavily involved in something where ultimately the outcome has directly anyway, very little impact on you? This is something that I feel very strongly about. You see all these people, my sister was just out protesting ICE, protesting all the kids being separated from their parents. Just because something isn't happening to me doesn't mean that it doesn't strongly affect me. And that's what we need to do. A lot of us are in different positions. Some of us are more privileged than others, and we need to use our positions not to make ourselves more comfortable necessarily, but to react to things around us with compassion and do what we think is right. The more education, the more knowledge, they say knowledge is power. And the more power that you have, then the more that you need to use that. Or not you, but, right. you know, people in general. And so I feel like I'm in a position and I see a path for, for creating a better future for fighters. And I, I'm on a mission. That's, that's what I want to do. Modern day Rosie the Riveter.
Uh, Lucas, if I can go back to you for just a second, you have, uh, I think, been on Twitter, and you've talked about this, and I believe it was reported by our own Mark Ramundi here at MMA Fighting. So you got the good news from Philly, but there's been one slight complication to the development in this case. What is that? Sure. So I mentioned previously that I received a call from Region 4 for early in the morning of Friday, and literally less than 24 hours, it was late Friday, I received a call from Region 4 saying, uh, hold on a minute. The Division of Advice in Washington, D.C. is demanding that the case first be sent through it prior to uh, a determination being made. Uh, and this, you know, my first opinion of this was this smack of uh, political string pulling uh, because the UFC was either shocked or unhappy with the determination that Region 4 had made. And so now it will be sent through some bureaucratic red tape sent to D.C. And it, uh, my experience with advice, I, uh, I dealt with uh, advice uh, on a charge against the major sports league uh, in 2010, uh, and it delays the process. It goes down to D.C., and the, the individuals that advise uh, review the case essentially from uh, you know, what the investigator in D.C. had put together. Uh, so I, I really believe this was a, a political game playing and, and, a, and simply just a delay tactic. And, and we're going we're gonna to put in a FOIA request for, for any and all correspondence with division advice as to, as to how this decision came to be. And, and, and I'm not going to rule out filing a complaint with the officer of the inspector general. Uh, as well, just to make sure that there was no, uh, there was nothing unsavory behind the scenes, and this case is judged only on its merits and nothing else. Is there any way for the audience, the layperson, to understand? Is this a significant obstacle, a partial obstacle? How big a deal is this? I, you know, it's not, it's not as giant of a deal as if someone had ruled against us, and and we're still, you know, Leslie is still in the driver's seat. Region Four has made its merit determination. Uh, their, their autonomy is being usurped a little, uh, but like I said earlier, it's, to, to me, it's, it's a delay tactic. So it is going to waste time, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to push a final determination potentially months down the road before a complaint now will ever be issued by the NLRB. Uh, and so it's frustrating, obviously, but uh, to, to me, it's, it's delay and nothing more. That takes me back to you, Ms. Smith. So what is your fighting future? You have been out here fighting for fighter rights and being a, uh, a very vocal and prominent advocate, more so really than anyone else in the space. But what about you returning to the cage? And I wonder, have all of your efforts at getting fighters a seat at the table, has it soured other, um, and other promoters from potentially offering you a, a contract? I sure hope not. I think that my fighting pedigree speaks for itself, and I think that my ability to come out and entertain and put on a great show for any any fight that I've been a part of um, should make people want to have me a whole lot. I just had an awesome weekend. I told you that Friday was the best day ever. It was yes. because I woke up in the morning with this news. Lucas was calling me about this news. And then in the evening, I got to watch my teammate, Carrie Melendez, win her second pro fight at Bellator. I don't know if you got a chance to watch it, but it was awesome. She dropped her with a straight right, and then she got a rear naked choke on her. It was really cool. <laughs> and I spent the whole weekend being out there with Bellator and watching all of this and seeing the way that they operate, and it was really nice to see that they operate. I'm going to work on trying to speak to Scott Coker and see if I can get something going on over there. I just like the way that they have a nice family feel. They... Um, they let the fighters do their own sponsorships, which is a lot more money for the fighters. And um, I want to fight again. I feel like I'm in the prime of my career. I feel like my last couple fights have been the best fights that I've ever had in training. I'm understanding more than I ever have. I feel like I got over a hump in my development as a fighter, and I would really like to get the chance to go back out there and show it. I don't want to compromise my position with the fighter's rights thing, but I don't think that anything that I could do at this point would compromise that. Before we go, if folks want more information about this case and what you're up to, what's the best place to get that? Two great places. One, if you want Project Spearhead, following Project Spearhead on Twitter and Lucas Middlebrook on Twitter. They give great information all the time. I give a lot of information, and I also give information about my fighting career. So following me is an option, too. All right. Well, there you have it. Lucas, 
Thank you for your time today and your uh, great advocacy as well as you, Leslie. I really appreciate you talking with us and spending some time with us here in the MMA Hour. And uh, we'll be following this case and the push for Project Spearhead. And we wish you nothing but the best of luck. Thank you so much today. Thank you. Thanks, Luke. All right.